Welcome to our fifth class, and today's goal is to become a Sumi painter. Good morning. <laughs> First, I would like to clarify exactly what a Sumi brush is and why we say Sumi. A Sumi brush is here, and it has very long, slender uh, bristles and they are made possibly from 10 different animals. Among them, your gray wolf, your rabbit, your deer, and a few others. It comes to a wonderfully pointed tip, and it is a beautiful instrument, usually with a bamboo holder. Uh, it is dangerous to soak your sumi brush in water because at the base of the brush, it is held together with animal glue. And if it's soaked too long, it will fall apart. So that is why there is usually a little string attached to the end of the sumi brush so that when it drains, it drains down instead of at the base. Your watercolor brush, on the other hand, this one is also made from animal hair, the pony and the ox. But as you can see, that it's a fat little brush, and it'll come to a point, but not as good as the Sumi brush. And it doesn't make any difference if you put it this way down in the jar to dry, okay? Because this holds it steady. Uh, sumi comes from two words. Sumi, which means black ink, and e or e, uh, which means painting. And it originated, of course, in China way back, and the Buddhist monks brought it to Japan. Uh, it is still very popular in calligraphy uh, and in the beautiful paintings that are done all over the world. Today, we are going to do some sumi and learn some brush strokes and, and how to do the bamboo. The first thing that we will do is to practice very simple strokes. Let me explain what you have in front of you. First off, you're receiving two bowls. One you will put your ink in and dilute it with a few drops of water and, of course, the bowl of water. The little jar contains India ink, which will stain and ruin your clothing. Please be very careful. All right, let us first take our brush in our hand and dip it into the water. And of course, we wipe it on the edge to get a few drops off. And I think that we'll put some more water in the bowl. All right, so let's put, let's say one, Two. Let's put two drops of water in the bowl. Let's go into our jar and swirl around a bit to mix up that black ink and put just a little bit into the bowl and mix it with the water. Whoa, that is very dark. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. I never quite know the intensity of the ink until I strike it on the paper. Uh, you have a towel 
for taking up excess water and ink. And you have your palette. Please take the 9 by 12 newsprint paper and fix it onto your clipboard. Let us now dip our semi brush into the mixture of water and ink and just tip, let the tip of the brush take off the excess. We are going to use a stroke in which we begin to trail along like an airplane on the runway, trailing it along and then we're going to press, apply pressure and then slowly lift it up. And that will give you these strokes here. It will be touch, pressure, and lift. In the morning, the bamboo leaves are straight up. And as the evening progresses and into the, uh, the late afternoon and so on, the leaves will kind of drop. So let's first practice that. All right, ready? Touch down, pressure, lift. Touch down, pressure, lift. We need to do a lot of practice, so let's try it again. Press down, pressure, lift. Press down, pressure, lift. Press down, pressure, lift. Press down, pressure, lift. If you want to get the a little darker, then just put it in the ink straight without mixing it with water. Press down, pressure, lift. Practice that several times on your paper. I must tell you now that when you have the lighter color, that always indicates the leaf that is further back in the background. The darker leaves, of course, imply it is in the front. So practice both of them, the dark over the light. Touch down, pressure, lift. Touch down, pressure, lift. Make them going up and make them going down. The beautiful part of Sumi, of course, is its spiritual connection. You are becoming calm inside and very peaceful. Contemplation, diligence, and patience are one of the virtues that come out of this type of painting. Let us now put this one aside and take another. And now we are going to practice groupings. Have the clean sheet? Good. Okay. Uh, in the groupings, it's usually done in a group of three or two. So we will practice uh, with the leaves going up. And it's always a count of short, medium, long. Or just medium and long. Looks like this is the only true grouping. Okay, so let's practice that. I'm going to put my brush in and just tip it with a very dark ink, a little draining. And let us practice short, long, medium. 
groups of three. Short, long, medium. You will become accustomed to how much ink you need each time. Into my black. It gets a little tricky, but if you keep practicing, you will get some beautiful results. Remember, this is a very delicate instrument, and mostly it is held at a straight right angle to the paper. That is one of the things, just, it should be like this, okay? So, short, medium, long. And now, a group of just two. Perhaps a short and a medium. You will get a lot of very satisfying groupings and designs. And you can just sit for hours and do this to perfect your skill. And I'm going to give myself a long one. Okay, let's go to the next step in our process. You also have been given, of course, a paper towel to absorb. All right, let's go to the next point. Please take your newsprint, put it to one side. And I have also included in the back uh, the cardboard backing. But I will guarantee you this will dry pretty quickly. We're going to go now to the infamous bamboo stock. Ah, every time I get to this, <laughs> I struggle. Okay. But you really need to persevere with this skill, really. Affix your paper. I am using a special board that I put together this morning uh, with a padding here, of course, because of the arm pressure and pressure into my hip. And affixed rubber bands at the bottom to hold it. And you will be receiving a board just like this. In fact, some of you already have. And usually, we put some kind of a masking tape, either around it or at the top, anything that will hold it down. So here is the tricky. You are going to put your brush into the ink that you mixed with water. Make sure you get a full loaded brush. You'd be surprised how much the animal hair absorbs the water. I took a very thick sumi brush, I mean a really fat one, and I said to my grandson Ryan, remember him from last week volunteering, and I said, close your eyes, smell this. And he said, Ugh. he said, what is that? I said, what does it smell like? He said, wet dog. I said, this is my brush with the wolf hair. And I was so happy. I have a gray wolf right in my hand. So, yeah, it smells like a wet dog. Okay. So we take our loaded brush and dip it into the very black paint, just the tip. Because what we're going to do is we're going to try to get an effect. I think this one's probably the better one I did. Of dark on one side and light on the other. Now, I don't know what you right-handed people do or which way the dark goes with you. But 
being left-handed, the dark is usually on my right. So, let's try it. We're going to press down and we're trying to get the tip of the ink, the very blackest part, to be on one side of the stalk. I find I can only do it by holding it a little bit of a diagonal and pressing down. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my paper and I'm going to go straight up. So I'm going to press, can we all see this? Press, and I'm going to drag it up and back. Okay, I think I just about, that's okay. So I'm going to do it again. And this time, as I go up, I'm going to pull back just as I reach the top of that joint of the bamboo stock. So down, and I'm leaving a little bit of space. Okay, so I'm going down, dragging it, and pull back. I'm going to do it without loading it up again and see what happens. Down up and pull back. Okay, I got a little bit of gray there. I've exhausted the paint on my brush, so I'm going to go back. I would like you all to do the next one with me. Load your brush, tip it in the black, get that black on the tip. At the bottom, start Press down, slide it up, and flick back. Another little artistic trick is that when you do the joint of the second stock, make sure it does not align with the joint of the first stock. In other words, you are varying your, uh, your joint. sounded kind of weird, but anyway. Okay, up we go again. And pull back. Oh, I got a nice shade in there. I got two shades. I'm going to keep the brush, leave that space, down, up, and back. Notice my joints do not align. Everything is varied. And pull back. Okay, I'm going to do two more just for practice. A little bit of water, a little bit of mixing into my black ink, and let's give it another try. Down, press, up, pull back, space, up, pull back, space, up, Pull back. I almost stopped and aligned it. That's why I went further up so I wouldn't do that. Everything is at your discretion. If I wanted to make a bamboo stalk that would go in back of that, the others, then I add a little more water and I try to keep it a little bit lighter. Let's see what happens. Okay, so in other words, these are in the foreground because they are darker, this one lighter in the background. I didn't get the gray I wanted, but that's okay. So that is this example here. I think it's safe to go on to the next example without having to change papers again. Uh, that is all right. Anything you do is fine because that little hook is going to get some companions in a little while because there are little twigs coming out from the bamboo stalk and from those little tiny twigs, then we paint the leaves. Okay. So everything is connected. All right, let's go ahead and do this sample here on which we emphasize the joints of the bamboo stalk. Getting some 
mixture and tipping it into the black. Let's get, for this part, let's get some just pure black on the tip. Because what we're going to do is we're going to encircle the bottom part of the stock. So I'm going to touch down and I'm going to do a C laying on its side. And it will wrap around the bamboo or appear to. Over here, I'm going to touch down and wrap around. Touching my black paint again. I'm going to do that to every one of them. It might look a little repetitious, but hey, we're practicing. We don't have to make perfect bamboo right away. I always like doing that little hook. And it doesn't have to be all going this way. It can be going up this way. Nature is perfect and imperfect at the same time. So don't you worry about little hooks. Yes? And Jessica, ultimately, is it really important to have that one motion? Or can you go back and divvy that? Or can you go back? A uh, student is asking, is it important to do that one particular motion? Or can you go back and what? And dab. And dab. Uh, I would say at this point when you're practicing, just let it go the way it is, okay? Don't start to pick at your picture. <laughs> you know, then we're going to get to the point where, is this really finished? Maybe I should do something, you know, more, more, more. And then you've got leaves all over the place. You can't see the bamboo, and you're wondering, what did I do wrong? Okay, we talked about that. Now, we're going to go to the point where we're going to put in these little twigs that are coming out of the bamboo. And this is where uh, Teresa asked about that little stick that came out. I'm going to make it come near or close to the joint. And it's just going to pop out like a thorn almost like that. Can you all see what I did? Yeah, I'm just making a little twig coming out there doesn't even have to touch. And you're not going in towards your body. You're going out, out. And yeah, you're going to get some little, maybe you're not doing it right. and Nobody cares. They just, somebody, enjoy yourself. Yeah, I guess the student says like whiskers. Yes. Okay, we threw making little twigs. All right, now I'm not going to switch papers, but we're going to go into the next thing. I'll show you the next panel. Oh, looks like that was. Next panel. We're going to try to put in a couple of little tiny leaves here and there. Okay. If you feel you want to start a whole new thing, fine. We could do that. We are getting on to our uh, close to our break time, but I think we'll proceed. We'll put on some leaves, and then when you come back, uh, we'll go into the long newsprint that I prepared for you. All right, pure black, pure black. Fine tip. Remember, down, pressure, and lift. You ready? Where, oh, where is it going to be? It's going to be around the tip where the little twig is. Okay. Let's see. Now, this is totally your discretion. 
I'm going to choose this one, although maybe it will go off the paper. That's okay. All right, down. Down, press, and lift. One, two, three. Okay, try your first one. Have fun. I'm going to do another one. Your choice. Where do you see a space where you can do this? Mm -hmm. I think I'll do this one. Down, press, and lift. Oh, that was bad. Uh, what can I do to cover that one up? Okay. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're all not going to be winners. Oh, there's another one for the recycle. Down and lift. Down and lift. <laughs> My recycle bin is kind of full right now from practicing. I'm going to try uh, just two. Okay. Down, press, and lift. Down, press, and lift. Okay, that was just a two combination. So we're going for the two, three combinations. At this point, go ahead and judge how you are doing this. Which way do you want them to go? Do you want them in the back, the front? What are they doing? Do you want to just fool around? If you want to just fool around, do so. Don't be afraid to go over another leaf. Don't be afraid to go in front of a stalk. You may do a dozen of these and decide something different every time. Oh, a loose hair. Hmm. Yeah, you have to check your brush every now and then because if you get a loose hair, it's going to drag it out. And yes, you can go over your work. Nobody said you couldn't. As you can see, it, it dries quickly. It dries quickly. Sean, do we have any camera that's pointed at the students or if they hold up their work, we can see it? No, huh? Not oh, okay. I would like you to save when we finish your save your best one, because since we are missing a camera, we had such fun last time. Did you see yourselves on on YouTube? Did you see yourself? You guys were just great. You do, you look great. I was proud of you. So we don't have that today, but that's okay because. Uh, Maybe we'll get you up here and, and show off your best work. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. Just because I said that, come back after the break, okay? I mean, you know, when she said that, I mean, she'll you know, disappear. She'll never know. Oh, yes, I will. I, I watch YouTube. All right, we're at break time, and I hope that you all have had a good time doing this. And I want to see your work later. All right, Sean, we're going to go on a short break now, 10 minutes. And when you come back, would you please uh, put your clipboards in the, on the back table? And Lena is now in progress, passing out the long, where are you? She's passing out the long boards. And the long boards have been equipped with a rubber band at the top and the bottom. And you'll be putting your paper into the rubber bands to hold them down. And it gets tricky. And if any of you want to stand, I meant to mention that first. If you feel more comfortable standing up 
and looking down. That is another way we do the Sumi painting. Uh, if you continue and you use the board, you may want to tilt it in front of you, and that means that you're holding on. Yes, okay. All right, happy break.
Oh, a student is asking me, <laughs> asking me about my shirt. I want to do a shout out to ACC, who really had a beautiful event last Saturday, their 50th anniversary, Ohana Walk. There were over 700 people. And we had a wonderful picnic, hot dogs, watermelon, lots of goodies. And then we all sat down for bingo. And there were huge prizes, a, a, a rice cooker, backpacks, toys for the kids. Just fantastic. I won two prizes, <laughs> so I was very happy. So uh, again, ACC supports so many wonderful activities for our seniors in our community. So I'm very happy to have you all here with this activity and there will be more fun to come. All right, let's get back to our Sumi painting. Each one of you has a board and again, you may either stand or sit and hold your board, whatever is comfortable for you. Uh, this is, a, of course, a larger size. It is approximately uh, 12. I've cut it down a little bit. And it is very long because we want to do some practicing of our very, very long bamboo. I, I want to point out the composition. I always choose to do a slight diagonal with the first stalk. So this is going to be my first aim. I'm going to be aiming from this side of the paper toward the right. I don't know what the inclination is for right-handed people. You might want to start over here and go to your left. So I'll be curious as to which way your bamboo leans. Uh, then I want to get a few in the foreground, which will be darker, and maybe one or two in the background, which will be lighter. The whole arrangement of the leaves is up to you. You may enhance it whichever way. The stalk doesn't necessarily have to start at the bottom of your paper. You can start it any way you want, and it can vary different positions. I wish I had those little red stamps. You know, when they finish their, their painting, they put a little stamp up here, over there, and oh, I want one of those. Okay, but I... I'm left with just writing my name. Okay, let's wet our brush and put a few drops of water into our mixing bowl and get our brush nice and loaded. It dripped by itself, but I'm just gonna take that drip off of it and dip the tip of the Sumi brush into the black ink, twirl it around a little bit and I'm going to take off on my adventure. Diagonal, touch, press, slide, and back. Well, I got some nice shading, but the stock didn't go diagonal. So I'm going to have to try that again. So if that one didn't work out, one of them has to. All right, so this one is going to be straight. All right, and back. And back. I'm getting some nice shading on this one, so I'm happy. So no matter what happens from this point, if you can accomplish that, the shade on one side and lighter on the other. You are well on your way to a really nice Sumi painting. All right, here we go again, loaded brush. Take the tip off, put it in the black ink. Maybe I'll do the diagonal here. Let's see what happens if I do that. Press down, slide it, go back. Very careful, try to follow along. Oh, I'm really happy with the shading. 
Oh, I never did that one before, kind of like an X mark. All right, I'm going to go back. My mixing bowl seems to be drying up quickly. I think the Sumi brush absorbs the water very quickly. All right, let's try one over here. Again, I'm varying where I put it. Slide and back. Slide and back. I'm really getting a good shade now. I'm so excited. I wish I had done this on white paper. Okay. It's tricky when you're going to... I'm going to see if I could cross over this one. That's a trick I haven't tried. All right, let's see what happens. Back and back. Back. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. It's okay if you want to try new things and they fail because you can't just aim to be perfect each time. So, Miss Perfect, I'm not. Okay, here we go again. Press and back. Watch those notches in the bamboo. Watch them, watch them. Looks like something is going to go on here. I don't know if I approve of it, but I'm going to, I'm either going to go in front of this one or I'm going to go in back. This was a bad experience, so maybe I'll, ooh, I don't know. Shall I or shan't I? I don't know. <laughs> well, I did it. I think I'm going to do a, a very black one here, just about this point, and pull back. See, if you make a mistake now, then the next time around, you're most likely not to make it again. So consider it a lesson learned. Press and pull back. One came out really dark. I see this void over here, so I am tempted just to go in and just hit it a little bit out of diagonal and off the paper. There's a sense of balance that you will develop as you go along. Don't be afraid to do one that is very, very dark, okay? Because the light ones are the ones in the background. I see things that I don't like in this particular composition, but I'm going to try to correct it when I get to the leaf part. All right, now I'm at the point where I am going to do the twigs and the joint emphasis. And I have a lot of stocks here, so I'm going to be very busy for a minute. Okay. Sometimes when you're working on it, you can try to correct some mistakes here and there. Or think you're correcting them. So I'm just going to run around the painting and blithely see where I need to put that little mark. Be nice if you had like some classical music playing while you're doing this, uh, like the Pack and Bell Cannon in D, or, or uh, Swan Lake or something. I mean, you know, just get your whole experience going. Well, 
time to do those little twigs. So I'm going to see if I can get my brush really pointed. And I'm going to strike out twigs. Just little wisps. Like little thorns. Little wisps here and there. Nobody cares. Do what you want. There's a lot of bamboo at the Sacramento Zoo, you know, where those pink flamingos are. And uh, I went and took some pictures of the bamboo. Gee, it's green. Well, what did you think? It was black? Well, the Sumi painting has that monochromatic scheme to it, that, that black and white and shades of gray tone that uh, is so beautiful. OK, I'm ready to do my leaves now. So I'm going to really fill up my brush. And I'm going to press down, pressure, and then pull up. Do I want the leaves going up or down? These leaves are all going down, so maybe I'll make these leaves go up. And remember your groupings of two and groupings of three. And remember also your count, small, large, medium, small, medium, large, whichever variation. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and try to do that. Eh, that one didn't work. I'm just, sometimes when I try to correct something, I'm just, nope. Should have left it alone the first time. <laughs> and that's another thing you learned. Once you do something, leave it alone. Okay, here's a good space right over here. Let's see what I can do here. And there. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Down. And third one. And one. And two. Okay, getting crazy here. Space is over here. So I'm either going to do it where there's a space, or I'm going to do it across another bamboo. My choice. My black ink. OK, try one going across and in front of another stalk of bamboo, just for the fun of it. Take very, very black India ink, put it on the tip of your brush, and strike it across another bamboo stalk. OK, here, here's one. Here, this one. OK, I'm going to do it right here, right across. Take that and that. Wasn't bad. Be adventurous. Let's see, what else can I do? All right, this one didn't get anything, so. Put two over here. So you have to kind of look around. Let's see, you know, where, when is it going to be too much? When am I going to groan about it and say, I wish I hadn't have done that? Five yeah. minutes ago. Five minutes ago, what Teresa says. That's OK, we're playing. Yes, we're only practicing. Now, when we finish this one, then I'm going to give you some white paper, and we're going to take another whack at it, OK? And if you're, then you decide if you're happy with the one on the newsprint or you're happy with the one on the white. You're going to choose, and we're going to have just a little bit of a show. OK, Sean? Yeah. Showtime. 
Just for a break, I'm going to wash my brush off in the clear water, which is now turned black, and wipe it gently, gently. Now, usually with a watercolor brush, you know, I usually take it and I hurl it into the sink like this and let the water go there, and then I flip the tip and make it nice and straight. But with the Sumi brush, no, I'm not doing that. I'm very gently... student is, is uh, complimenting another friend who's doing beautiful work. Uh, if, your Sumi brush has, is very interesting. I got some Sumi brushes that didn't have this little string at the end, and I didn't understand, do they want me to hang this somewhere? And, uh, but then after I read about the bristles coming out if you soak uh, the brush too long in water, I said, of course, that's, you know, of course that's what you do. You gotta let it go this way. Learn something every day. All right, I'm putting my, my Sumi brush down now, and I'm going to remove my newsprint. Uh, do you have the white paper at the table? I don't think so. If you do not have it at the table, uh, perhaps you would help each other and go to the back table where the clipboards are stacked, <coughs> And uh, let's help each other out and get a nice, yeah. It, it'll be this size and it will be long. So we're gonna do that. And this paper, I would say just, if you write your name at the bottom, why don't you put it on the tables where there are no occupants? Okay, I'm gonna put mine, mine on now, so. This paper should fit right on and slip right in. Uh, this is a watercolor paper. Uh, they go by pounds. So this one is 98 pounds. So it has some uh, texture to it. You might check to make sure you're on the right side. I did not put the line uh, on the other side. I'm sorry about that. But let's see if you can tell which is slightly textured and which is not. You won't ruin your paper. I mean, this is, because we're not using watercolors. Okay, and secure it with your rubber band. I think we're going to have just enough time to do a painting on the white and to choose and to have our student show. That'll be nice. I will not force anybody to come up here, okay? If you just if you want to share, okay? If you want to share with our online audience, I'm sure they would love to see your work. I know I would. Okay, I guess I'm secure. How is every, raise your hand if you feel that you have secured your paper and you're ready to begin. Okay, I see one, two, Philip, are you ready? I'm ready, ready. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that, them's fighting words. <laughs> Philip says he's ready for anything. Okay. Here comes anything. <laughs> and you all have enough ink, yes? Check your ink well. Yeah. Going to make it? Okay. All right, here we go. Now remember, I'm going to try to get that diagonal. Not be so. And I'm going to go this way, or you're going to go that way. And dark in front, light in back. Okay. 
little bit of water on my brush and into the mixing bowl, loading up my wolf haired brush. I love the fact that the wolf contributed to this. I love wolves. And into my black ink with the very tip. Here we go. Press down, pull, and back. It's dripping, but I'm going to let it drip. I'm trying for that diagonal. Into the black ink goes the tip. Trying to get the diagonal and press, sweep, and pull back. A little bit better. Now the drip bothers me a little bit, but if I touch it, I don't know what's going to happen, so I just keep my hands off of it. All right. Tip into the black pot. Touch down, push, and pull back using the same amount of paint. Push and pull back. I got a slight diagonal, not as much as I wanted, but enough so that I can see the shadow, the shade, and the separation of the star. A uh, student is asking, why am I pulling back? How do you do it? Uh, you want to get more shading, more tone. And when you pull back, you get this little bit of tone up here, this little bit of darkness. Uh, and you release, you're releasing the rest of your ink. So if you press down like this, and then you turn up, what is the pull back, like this? Towards yourself. Uh, OK, let me, let me try this one. Okay, I'm pressing down, I'm pushing, and as I lift the brush, instead of having it go flying into a point, I pull back a little. Oh, okay. Because if I didn't, I would lift off, and I'd get a point that I don't want. Okay. And this paper absorbs, so you can't correct any mistake you make. Mm -hmm. And I don't, yeah, I don't want that that tip. I'm trying to control the, uh, what shall I say, uh, the, f the finale. Okay, I'm trying to control it. That's all there is about Sumi. Control, discipline. So I think, well, I don't know where this is going to go. I just messed up. I don't know where this is going to go. I just aimed it in the wrong direction. So now I'm stuck. So I'm going to say, that stock broke off. <laughs> I can make excuses. OK, that stock broke off, and I'm going to do another one. OK. All right, I'm going to try one over here straight. And I'm going to vary the base. Press down, take off, pull back. Press down. Take off, pull back. That one went a little more smoothly, so I could follow it over here. And maybe I could get away with it, sort of. OK, I'm going to do another one. I think I'm going to do a, a grouping over here, just for the fun of it. That didn't turn out too badly. Now I've got a whole pile of bamboo in one spot, and I'm still trying to do a grouping over here. So here I go. I'm going to try to make this one straight. Press down, pull, pull back. 
I didn't get my black, so I have to try it again. Press down, sweep along, pull back. Nope, losing my shading. What does that mean? Maybe I need more water in my mixing bowl. Maybe I don't have enough on my brush. Maybe I didn't get enough black at the tip. Now always be sure, if you see a drip coming out of the tip of your brush, uh, wipe it off, wipe it off. It doesn't belong there. All right, let's see if this one comes out better. Okay, yeah, that, that one came out a little bit better. All right, now I'd like to do one in the background, so I'm gonna put a little more water in there, and I'm gonna just, like a, a ghost in the background, pull back. Now I see I'm very heavy over on this side, so I really need some little thing over here. I don't wanna to get too involved, so I'm gonna see if I can make a very Thin one. And lean it out of the picture. Okay, that'll that'll work. That'll work. You have to keep balancing. Okay, now is the time for the accentuating the joint of the bamboo. And I don't care how many mistakes I make on that because nobody's going to tell. Nobody knows the difference. Again, I say that the joy you get out of it belongs to you. If somebody likes what you're doing and they say that's nice, then the joy belongs to them. Whatever you create, initially it is your joy, your pleasure. Of course, you always hope that your grandchild will come along and say, oh, I like that, can I have that? Ah, oh, yes, yes, of course you can, I'll frame it for you in gold. Yes, you can have this. Teresa's going to give a painting to her grandson. Yes, and they hang it on the wall, and you know, years later, my grandma did that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, she was wonderful. If you can't remember me, remember my painting. All right, now is the time for the twigs. Oop, that was a hard one. Gotta make my twigs tiny. Cause then, then I have this, do this leaves. Sometimes they look like little thorns too coming out. You know, cat whiskers, thorns. Fun, just fun. I hope our online viewers are having fun. Next week, I'm going to bring the soul, solar photography 
So please remember, bring things that are close to your heart. I'm going to do some jewelry with turtles and lizards. We love reptiles. And just little pins I used to wear. So um, we're going to do an experiment. And we're going to go outside and put them on the, a picnic table. Sean's going to set it up for us. And then we're going to come back in and, and do something else that's fun while we're waiting for our photographs to develop. Okay, I think it's time for me to do the leaves. If I feel I want to do more of these little twigs, I can do that later. Okay, here's, here's the finale now. Pure black. Show us what you learned today. Groupings of two and three. Two. But yeah, that occupy. Yes, uh, also try to feel how is this occupying the space? What is it trying to do? Is it going in front? Is it going in back? Am I going to do two? Am I going to do three? Is it morning when the leaves are shooting up? Or is it toward the evening when they're bending down just a little bit and hanging their heads? Where is my space? Am I going to cross over this one? Yeah, let's cross this one. And that's a big, long one. And a medium one, and a little tiny one. Happy bamboo, reaching for the morning sun. Straight across. If you want to learn further how to paint like little birds, butterflies, the koi fish. There are loads of videos that you can watch that are enjoyable and very informative. So I know you must be doing that now. I do it. I'm always curious to see how someone else uh, represents certain things. And there are books also that will teach you these, how to do the animals. Two and three. At this point, I'm being very wary. Don't overdo this. Be careful. Of course, I think we all tend to do a little too much. We're watching the direction of the bamboo. We're watching uh, the quantity of leaves we put from one uh, part of the composition to the other. We are trying to balance our lights, our darks. It's all a question of balance. Where do you want it to be sparse? Where do we want it to be full? I just got a little careless. I lost my tip and I paid for it. So be careful that when you put your brush down, you have the tip secure. I'm just about done. Don't want to get too crazy. The best thing to do is to look at your painting from across the room. Often after I think I'm finished, I will put the painting uh, in a, one part of the house and I will walk just so I could see it from a long, long distance away. 
Some students are saying, yeah. A revelation when you walk, you walk far away. And it's either a, gee, that looks nice, or Ugh, I know what's wrong. Yeah, all of a sudden you'll discover just what it is that you did that you shouldn't have done and vice versa. And then you just go correct it. But don't overdo it. I kind of like this composition because I can see that I've, I've got a space over here that, is work, that we're worked with. And I see one of, some of our students are ready to show. I better just get out of the way. Oh, we're raring to go here. All right, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the floor. Oh, let me first clean off this brush, and uh, I think what we're going to have to do is uh, put them in the sink or something. Yeah, yeah, I also see that I've messed up my table, but it's messed up anyway, so I don't care. All right, I'm going to pull this over carefully. Uh-oh. I got some paint on the floor again. I didn't realize that. Oh well. It's a hard floor. Uh, okay, trying to avoid the paint. Will our first student come up? And who is it going to be? Don't turn around and point at other people. Get up here. Okay, who is this? Uh, Jane, is it Jane? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mary. Okay, Mary has volunteered to come up with her lovely painting. And Teresa, you're next. You're not going to get away with this. Okay, Mary, um, if you come over here. Okay, all right. Nice. Lovely. They're all so different. Ah. Mary, thank you very much. Lovely work. Thank you. Teresa? Oh, I like the shading in her bamboo. Yes, let's give a hand to our people. Oh. Yes, thank you. Nice. Okay. Jane. Jane. Jane is shy, but Jane will come up. <laughs> she, she will be forced. <laughs> All the way to look at this. Oh, I like the composition. I like the diagonal. Jane, you're a hard worker. Let's give her a hand. Hard worker. Okay. Uh, he knows I'm looking at him. <laughs> Is that, yes, Alan, are we going to share with our online viewers? And I know the online viewers would love to share with us. I know you guys, if we had a back and forth thing, I would love to see what you did. My goodness. Uh, Alan, move over just a little bit more. Oh, oh wow. Oh, this is different. Looks like very nice. it, it carries very well. Thank you, Alan. Uh, anyone wow. else? No. <laughs> Pat, Philip, are we? Okay, Philip wants to show, and so does Pat. So J Jane is assisting Philip, and very nice. thank you, cool. Phil. Very nice, thank you, Philip. And thank you, Jane, for assisting. Okay, Pat, you're the you're the only one that. Uh, I'm embarrassing her. I am. I'm sorry, Pat. Get up here, Pat. <laughs> this show is almost over. There she goes. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I am so glad that you came today and we had such a great time. And thank you again, Sean, a cameraman, and uh, the caregivers that brought uh, that Philip here, the Denise. Uh, and again, practice, practice, practice. Go home. If there's extra paper over there, take it. 
practice at home and just keep going. If your paintings have not dried, please take the cardboard. Uh, if you need to put some newsprint on top to blot uh, the ink, please do so. And, uh, and again, uh, I know you're going to return for our last show because I will have a small art gift to give you as a, as a goodbye. And I hope that you will come back again. We are going to do a show after, after the holidays. We'll probably continue, uh, you know. And we, we will be doing a show here uh, around uh, Veterans Day for the um, Alzheimer's Association. And I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, okay. So that, that's, that's forthcoming. That, uh, we will also probably be doing a solo photography with them also. It's very nice. But again, bring your stuff. If you like nature, bring dried flowers, uh, little twigs, things like that. I have some dried flowers myself. Well, I think our time is up. And again, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, and uh, come, back, come back next week. More fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.